I read an article a couple of months ago entitled, Tipping is Not a Sustainable System. My Income Relies on the Goodwill of Others. It briefly tells the story of Brendan Madden, a 25-year-old pizza delivery driver in Lincroft, New Jersey, uh, and to discuss how he makes his salary nightly, highlighting the difficulties of consistency. I read it because I was initially intrigued at the title, and I had some brief and animated conversations about others, or sorry, with others about tipping. One key line that stuck out in my mind, I don't think it's a sustainable system because not everyone tips fairly. Hmm. I can go in many different directions with this statement, but it got me thinking as a diversity, equity, and inclusion practitioner that we explore the concept of fairness daily. I briefly studied philosophy as an undergraduate, so I would consider myself an amateur philosopher at best. I asked myself, is it really a sustainable system or is it just this person's experience? But then I thought about the last time I had the opportunity to give a tip and let's just say he might have a point. Think back to the last time you had to give a tip for some service that you received. What were some factors that went into your tipping philosophy? How did you tip? The institution of tipping is so complex with its written, unwritten rules, different understandings of etiquette. The very nature of tipping arguably exacerbates social injustice, but that's another story for another time. Let me give you an example of its complexities. Let's just say you and a couple of your friends go to eat at a restaurant where you order the food at the counter, but then you go to the table because your food is then brought out to you. The food is prepared in the back, and it takes you between eight and 10 minutes for you to receive it. At the counter, after the person takes your order, they tell you the total, and then the dreaded next screen pops up. I'm presented with this dilemma each time I'm asked, do you want to leave a tip? I struggle with this internally because this question uh, has me having to make a snap decision in the moment when there are so many factors that need to be considered. One, does this service require a tip? Two, if yes, how much should I consider? Three, should I give the customary 20%? Four, who determined that 20% is conventional or customary? Five, if a person's service expected, affected my experience in a positive way, should I tip more? Six, what if the bill is small and 20% doesn't seem adequate enough? Should I tip more? And then lastly, is the amount I'm considered tipping inclusive of the taxes on the bill? This gets into a different line of questioning, and I'm going to say that for another talk at another time. So let's quickly determine an amount in this instance that will be customary. So for a bill of $34.40, you can quickly take 10% by moving the decimal one place to the left. That gives you $3.44. And then you double it. That'll get you 20% at $6.88. And then you route it to the nearest dollar, which would then be $7. So let's go back to question one or that I asked myself at the beginning or near the beginning of this uh, presentation. Does the service warrant a tip? Now I did some informal surveying with some people that I know, so I'll consider this very non-scientific. Um, and many of them would say if it's part of a person's job and that person makes a decent wage, then the act of taking an order in and of itself doesn't deserve a tip. But of course, this is not everyone's position. And right there is the crux of the issue. Let me give you another example. One day I was feeling excited about lunch because I wanted earlier that day because I wanted to get some pancakes. Uh, there is a restaurant that I've eaten at that specializes in breakfast, so I knew I was in for a treat. Um, I walked into that space on that dreary day and I was immediately sat in an area that didn't have too many patrons. I ordered some multi-grain pancakes, very similar to the ones here, so breakfast sausage and a glass of water. And as you might assume, that might be an inexpensive meal. So after I cleared my plate very quickly uh, and the staff brought out my bill, price $16. So again, doing the math that we did earlier, tip on $16 bill is $3.20.
So let's go back to the original question that I posed at the very beginning of this presentation. A conventional tip of 20% is 320. The person that brought, took my initial order just did just that, took my initial order and then brought my food out when it was done. Does that deserve a tip? Now, I understand why a conventional tip uh, was relatively accepted by U.S. society because it takes the guesswork out of a, applying a tip at the conclusion of service received. So one doesn't have to run through the gauntlet of questioning that I ran through at the beginning of this presentation. Now, how do we come to 20% as being customary uh, for tip percentage? A quick search uh, had Time Magazine writing an article uh, that established tipping as a custom that dates back to a very problematic point in our nation's history. Um, in 1863, uh, after slavery was abolished by the Emancipation Proclamation, restaurants realized that they could hire workers and not pay them as long as restaurant guests were giving employees a gratuity. Tip credits were introduced in, 1960s, in the 1960s, allowing restaurants to pay their tipped employees less than minimum wage. And in 1996, mere employee wages were frozen at $2.13 an hour. So now, a quick internet search on tipping will net you a lot of opinion articles. One article that I found suggests that you should almost always tip at least 20%. Uh, because if you don't, you signal to the wait staff that you're not worth much. That same author goes on to mention that good customers tip 20% and then round up. And would also suggest that those that choose not to tip lack etiquette. Another article I found uh, discusses places where US Americans tip versus places that they actually do tip. Uh, there's also been an increase in places where they are unexpected places asking for a tip. A, a user on Reddit by the name of r slash Austin noticed a line in their bill for a tip after receiving an oil change. Uh, this person also saw a tip line uh, at a local fast food restaurant after getting their food in the drive through One more interesting article I found um, highlighted how the pandemic the COVID-19 pandemic uh, brought a heightened awareness uh, to our hourly workforce and compensation. The old tipping rules no longer apply to individuals and people are compensating more for their wage staff than they were pre-pandemic. The author also raised a good point and one reason why I believe that I am now shouting down an empty hallway is that we really need to rethink tipping. Quote, the tipping is the icing on the cake but what people want is more cake. So in other words, let's pay more money for the work given so that people don't necessarily have to rely on the goodwill of others. From December 1955 to December 1956, one of the most largest and most organized demonstrations took place here in the US in Montgomery, Alabama. Its purpose was to protest the rampant discrimination and segregation that was happening in the city bus system. While on its face, the circumstances surrounding the boycott are much different than what this talk would suggest, in order to overturn the system, the organized effort was an extreme response to wanting and needing a change. I believe we can do the same in this situation when it comes to the system of tipping. Real change is gonna require drastic action, one that's going to require some pain in the short term while facilitating results in the long term. Here's what I think would happen. Wait staff would, require, would be slowly leaving their positions that would require tips to be made whole. Companies that require that wait staff that require tips to be made whole would either need to rethink their compensation policy, policies and either adjust them or double down on their thinking. The dominoes would fall and the system would need to be rebuilt in a different but more sustainable fashion. Again, painful in the short term, but long-term, more favorable. Here I'm gonna present you with an unpopular opinion phrased in the form of a question. What if we were to stop tipping altogether? You don't have to answer it now, but consider it the next time you are asked the question, do you wanna leave a tip? Thank you.